Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, I want to take a look at how I designed this deck for the Adafruit Feathered Fingerboards project. It was a lot of fun figuring out how to design uh, the skateboard deck. So I want to show you guys how I designed it in Fusion 360. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to Kaching who put together this tutorial a couple years ago. He's on the Autodesk Fusion 360 team. Uh, basically, it's a tutorial on how to create kind of these bends in Fusion 360. So. I definitely highly recommend checking out this tutorial. I have it linked down in the description. If you are interested in making a skateboard deck and you want the, the actual tech dimensions, uh, you can totally find them. I just searched for skateboard deck tech drawings in Google Images and came up with this one. So if you want like some real specific um, values, you can totally find them. So in Fusion 360, here's the design I put together, and y'all can download this if you want. The uh, source file is available to download. I'll have it linked down below. But basically, what's really cool about this is that it's driven with just two paths. So the cool thing is I can kind of modify this um, like that, and Fusion will automatically update this because it's being driven with this with this path. I can I can just modify the path, and Fusion 360 will will do its best to kind of, um, that is the wonkiest skateboard. Should send that to the Braille guys. But it's a really cool way um, to kind of drive this whole design with just two sketches. So I want to show you guys how I put it together. So in a new design document, uh, I started by making the path. And that's kind of the, the side view of the skateboard. So I'm going to bring up my line tool. I'm in the model workspace, by the way, just kind of your regular model workspace. And I'll, I'll probably do it here in the front. Looking at the front view in the view cube, I'll click on that plane and then just kind of draw out a basic line here. So depending on if you want to actually make uh, tech, uh, dimensions, this is where you would apply your dimensions and stuff, but I don't really plan to do that. So I'm not really going to add these. You could, you could kind of sketch it out and then add dimensions later, which is okay, I guess. So I got my straight line. Now I need to make some curved lines. I need to slope down and kind of come up. So the best way to do that for me is to use a spline tool. So I'm going to uh, work off of this line here, click, click, and then maybe right here, and then I'll complete it with this checkbox here. So, the cool thing with the spline is you get these green handles, so you can, they're kind of like Bezier curves, so you can modify the curvature of it, and you get this green outline that shows you a representation of the curve. You can shrink them inwards to get a tighter curve, or increase it to give a longer curve, that kind of stuff. Um, let's say we want to smooth these two out, we want it to be a nice continuous. Uh, uh, transition between the two. I like using the tangent. It's the best way to do it. So I'm going to say I want this curve to be tangent with this line and it'll just do it for you. So there's our little tangent um, constraint. So let's say that's okay. We could obviously add some values and stuff if we wanted to, but I think we're okay. Maybe straighten this out a little bit like that. Probably works okay. It kind of curved backwards. That's kind of interesting. Let's go forward like that. All right. So Obviously, we could play around with it as much as you want, but they're just going to kind of run through this. So I'll stop sketch. For the second sketch, I need to draw on this area here. So I'm going to click on Create Sketch, and I'm going to click on this guy here. So now we're looking at it from the, the, the side view. OK. So to create my, uh, my curve here, uh, I'm going to use the concave curve. And I like using this one a lot. So I'm going to make my two points like this. And then my third point is the curve. So I'm going to add a curve value here, maybe something like that, 0.4 maybe to round it off on the rule value. And the next thing we want to do, now that we have our curve, we want to line it up so that this bottom touches uh, this guy here. So I'm going to hide uh, sketch number three and click on that. I will uh, type M on my keyboard to bring up the move command. And I'm going to move it down until I kind of touch that right there. So that looks like it's touching pretty good. I'll hit OK. And now I have my two, I can stop the sketch. Now I have my two sketches. I'll bring up back the other one, reveal it. Now I got my two sketches, you know, uh, they're uh, looking pretty good. Of course, we don't have any dimension set to them, but that's because we're just kind of freehanding it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I need to create uh, a surface geometry to, to combine these guys. So I'm going to change my workspace from model and go to patch. So if you kind of roll over the patch workspace, you kind of get an idea just by looking at the thumbnail what you make. You basically kind of create these surfaces that will eventually be solids. So that's kind of how we built this. So if you look at under create, you can see all of the available tools, pretty much like your common tools that you would expect. 
Note, however, the, the icons are a shade of peach, pinkish. Uh, and these let you know that they are, um, the, they're specific to the patch workspace. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one here called sweep. So the idea is that we're going to sweep uh, across this path using this profile. So the first thing it's asking for is a profile, which will be this guy here. And then we need a path, which will be this rail over here. So right off the bat, it creates what we expected it to. And if we manipulate the little handle here, you can see what it's doing. So it's grabbing that path and just extruding this out, slopes down and back up. And the cool thing is that it is completely parametric and modifiable. So as I change the paths, this will automatically update. So everything else we can leave alone. The orientation is perpendicular, which is good. We want to make it a new body. And of course, this chain selection is selected. So hit OK. And you'll look here in the bodies. It's got that little icon that looks like a cuff or something. That is letting me know that it is a patch. So this is not, you can't 3D print this or machine this just because it's not solid yet. It's just kind of a, a reference surface. So to in order to create this into a, a body, it's actually really easy. All we need to do is apply a thickness to it, especially for this type of design. It just needs to be thickened. It doesn't need a, a different surface to patch it or kind of stitch it together. You just add a thickness. So under create, there's this thing called thickening. You can see even the color of it is uh, blue, which lets me know it's a solid. So this is gonna turn this into a solid. As soon as I click on it, you see what it's doing. You have an option to do directions. I want it to be symmetrical, so it's kind of puffing out, thickening out on both ends. And we can control this however we want um, to make it thick or not. I'll hit okay. And now we have a solid. So you can see here the body five is a solid. This is the patch. Um, so it just kind of hides itself. It's just hanging out there. It's being referenced. And now what we can do is we can kind of round off these edges with a fillet. I want to be careful not to add too much because it'll freak out and break like that right there. It says it can't do it. So just kind of incrementally adjust it. I think 0.6 is okay. I'll hit okay. And that is our first half of our deck. So depending on how well it came out or not, um, you just got to modify your values in the sketch depending on how you want your, your deck to look. Since it is just a half of a deck, um, you could obviously build the whole sketch, or you could just mirror it like I did. Um, so I'll do a mirror. I know skateboards probably aren't symmetrical. They, they have a head and a tail, um, but this one's going to be symmetrical just for kind of demo purposes. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just doing a mirror, and it's a body pattern type. The object is that, and the mirror plane was this guy here that I just selected. I'll hit OK, and now I have two different bodies. Obviously, that looks a little bit too long, so we can go back into the... Uh, the first sketch that we made and modify it so I can just grab <clears throat> these lines over here and move them easily just kind of like that and obviously you can change whatever you want to it it looks okay it's not too bad uh, I, I spent a good amount of time playing with mine the original one just to get the, the right dimensions and stuff um, but this one, I obviously didn't add any dimensions to it. So this is really cool. Just a quick way to, to kind of mock up uh, an idea. And then you can fine tune it and add all the dimensions you want and stuff. So this is how I put it together. Um, oh, one last thing is you probably want to combine these guys. So just do a combine. I don't know why combine isn't showing up. You know why? Because I'm in the patch. So going back up to the model workspace, select those two, and now I can combine them. Uh, if I can type it in, right? Combine, combine the two, and it'll make it into one solid. So from this point, you can add all whatever you want to it, uh, the mounting holes, for example, all that good stuff. So that's just a quick look on how I I, I put together a uh, a deck. This is really really simple in my opinion. Once you get the process down, it's really easy to come in here, modify, add tech drawing or tech dimensions and whatnot. Um, uh, this I, I'm hoping this technique could be useful for a lot of other different things. Say maybe you're making a chair or you're making um, furniture or something like that. It needs to be nice and curvy. You can really uh, prototype one really quick um, and, and make something that's, that's kind of you know, uh, thickened out so you don't have to kind of combine two different surfaces together. You just thicken it out. So I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool, pretty interesting. Let me know what you guys think, if you have any tips or anything that can uh, make this even better. Let me know. It'll help me out and help other people out too. Um, let me know what you guys thought of this technique and I'll see you guys in the next one.